Let me unveil to you the CFO case study 2016, which is the case study pack itself from which you will be working through as part of a, of, of a team. The document itself has three key parts. There is the first part which runs from the very beginning all the way to page four. That seeks to clarify to you the rules of the competition, why the competition, submission formats, and specific disclaimers that you need to be conversant with and ensure that you abide by those, by those rules. That first part, which is page four, sorry, ends with page four, which is basically the task. The task is what is actually being expected from you. Now, it seeks to clarify exactly how the subsequent two parts of the pack itself are going to be addressed. Now, the second part of the pack actually runs from page 5 to page 14. That's actually the case study itself, the beginning. But now, the beginning in terms of the background information, it identifies the company, it identifies the global business environment within which this company is operating. It goes all the way to situate the company itself, its, its challenges, its opportunities, some background information up to 2014, as well as its financial performance, ratios, and other statistics, its share price, and all the rest. Now, you're not asked to solve anything with respect to this first section, specifically referring to page 4 to page 14. It is just background information to help you do your industry scan, your environmental scan, your situation analysis, to understand the background from which the company is coming. Now, the second part of this document, which actually runs from page 15 all the way to page 25, is actually the scenarios that you're being asked to address yourself to. There are actually five scenarios which have been documented here. These scenarios are not necessarily in any order of importance. They've just been presented there by way of helping you understand the issues that need to be addressed. So your duty is to analyze these various scenarios, identify the technical key areas, the people elements and all those things and begin to unpack and come up with possible solutions. Now, it is important at this point that we try and assist you, especially for those who may not have mentors and therefore would struggle to understand exactly what is required of them. It's important that one seeks to clarify some of the pervasive skills or the important skill areas associated with each of these tasks. The issues have not been presented in any order of priority. They've just been outlined on your case study from the beginning all the way to the end. The very first issue is called security crisis and legal wrangling in Nakoya. This presents a major challenge for the business. We have not clarified as to whether this is an opportunity, whether it's a threat, whether it's a weakness, or whether it's an ethical issue. But we have presented this issue to yourself. Your duty is to analyze this issue and determine what exactly is the problem with respect to this particular issue. We have tabled, tabled there what we will call the oversight responsibility area. In a typical business, a matter like this is, is probably going to be handled by corporate affairs. So a modern day CFO needs to be familiar with the role of corporate affairs. Corporate affairs is within that role where things like investor relations, legal issues are actually dealt with and, uh, and the rest. So we've tried to identify for you the specific knowledge areas that you would need to go and draw principles from to be able to resolve or apply it to whatever you have to be attending to with respect to this particular issue. Those knowledge areas include ethics and corporate social response. So you need to be conversant with the principles that that actually regulate and guide this particular area. How a company goes about crafting and executing a legal defense strategy. You need to understand that because it will be vital in terms of how to respond to the issues that are actually with respect to this first one. There's also issues of how to manage your reputation, the stakeholders of a business. You will need to draw some understanding from that area to address this particular issue. The very next issue again, the second but not necessarily in order of importance, is a mobile operator license opportunity in Chinese. Chinese is a country somewhere in South Asia, South Pacific. MCOM is eyeing the chance or the expectation that it might want to go into this particular market to as part of the process of continuing to expand and develop its, 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 its business. So this is typically what we will call oversight role of a CEO from a strategic management point of view. Now the specific knowledge areas that you would need to grasp in order to untangle or analyze this particular opportunity, come up with clear recommendation would include once again you have to understand your, your ethics and corporate social responsibility, how companies go about plotting a global expansion strategy, some knowledge from there would be helpful 
international investment strategy, how risk and return dynamics and currency issues or currency risks are actually taking into account when you plot an international growth strategy, how to assess an international market. You might at some point, uh, MCOM might want to enter into one particular foreign market, maybe out of the continent where it operates. What types of tools would you really put together to be able to assess an international market? Market growth strategies, entry strategy, how to enter a country and actually implant yourself and continue to sustain and renew yourself in that particular country. And one key element that will be vital to unpacking this particular is what's called strategic performance management. From a corporate governance point of view, from an integrated reporting point of view, this company, MCOM, has a range of metrics that it has put in place in terms of its reported commitments to its stakeholders. It needs to look at how those strategic performance measures could add value in terms of the ability to win licenses in those foreign markets they are actually trying to go to. The very third issue again in the in the order in which we have presented is what is called shared services center in Sadimba. MCOM is faced with very serious cost control challenges. They have been looking at ways how to reform their operating models and save cost and, and become very, very much more streamlined as a business and they've responded by creating a shared services center in their headquarters in a country call Sadimba and MCOM is faced with backlashes across all its markets. There are concerns as to whether that is not cutting jobs from other markets and actually creating jobs in the markets where it is deemed to be MCOM's specific area of, 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 of preference. Now this presents a huge challenge. Shareholders are wanting to know how much savings have been achieved uh, thus far. Shareholders want to know whether there is need to review the strategic decision that has led to the creation of this shared services center. The specific discipline or in terms of pervasive skill that you're going to need to be able to unpack this issue actually stems from the area which is called cost accounting, cost and management accounting. Now I'm going to point out some of the knowledge areas that will specifically support uh, this area. Again, ethics and corporate socialism would be helpful in terms of you understanding how a company can respond to stakeholder backlashes in some of its, some of its markets. How to deal with cost and cost recovery, overhead apportionments and recovery from business units is also a knowledge area. So things like overhead absorption rates and all the rest would be vital for you to deal with that. There's also issue of currency risk. MCOM is based in Sardimba. It's got markets in Middle East, in other countries like Nakolia and the rest. It trades in multiple different currencies. As part of the decision to create this shared service center in Sardimba, there will be issues of currency risk and how the treasury, group treasury function will respond to be able to support the business with this specific uh, element of its strategy. But embedded within that is also issues issues of supply chain. Now, a shared service is probably going to assist with supply chain issues. Do you understand supply chain, models of procurement management, how those would impact on the information systems of a, of a, of a company? And lastly, on that particular element is what is called technology and big data. So these are the knowledge areas or areas from which you can draw your understanding from your background studies to be able to help respond to the challenge in terms of cost control for the business. The other issue, the very next issue that is in the order in which we present is what is which is what we term political risk and strategic uncertainty in a key market called Elania. Elania is one of the markets where MCOM actively operates in, in the Middle East. Now, Elania is caught up in some serious political and strategic uncertainties that set the scene for major shareholder value uh, challenges that the company will need to try and gra grapple with. The specific discipline areas or oversight responsibilities that you will need to draw from would actually include risk management as well as financial management. Now let me point out some of the types of tools and knowledge uh, that could be helpful. In fact, th these are just some. You could raise some of them by yourself. We allow you the scope to go beyond what we have actually pre presented to help you untangle the issue from the multiple different perspectives. Now, again, ethics and corporate social responsibility understanding will be key to understand the strategic context and the challenge that this business faces in this particular uh, market. But apart from that, uh, the issue has to do fundamentally with risk and risk management. So tools of risk and value analysis that are going to be vital would include things like ranking, risk mapping, sensitivity analysis, how to use decision trees to quantify and evaluate 
complex options that are before uh, before the board sensitivity analysis these are some of the tools that could be helpful to help you understand exactly how to quantify the options and actually present a way forward for for management maybe it doesn't add the concepts like void value of perfect information is going to be critical expected values will be critical standard divisions will be critical in terms of how to unpack this particular issue and I'll take it all the way to black schools black schools model you may find that vital in terms of quantifying the uncertainty or the value embedded in whatever options are actually provided for here but apart from that also dividend valuation techniques how to value dividends and bring that in terms of understanding how it impacts on the range of uh, on the options of the business going forward those are the knowledge areas now last but not the least is what I will call Nakolia fine and MCOM capital structure a huge fine has been imposed on MCOM in fact, the fine is so massive. I'll leave it up to you to evaluate what is that fine, the value of that fine in relation to the, in relation to the total balance sheet and or statement of financial position of the business. But here's the challenge. A massive fine has been imposed on MCOM. MCOM has to respond in terms of whether or not to pay the fine and if it has to pay the fine, what is the impact on its capital structure? What is the impact on its gearing? What are the other challenges that it has to deal with in terms of how to respond to this, to this fine? The specific knowledge areas that a top modern day CFO business leader would need to grapple or grasp or from where uh, concepts and tools and techniques would actually derive from to respond to this issue would actually involve auditing which will be split between internal auditing as well as external auditing this would test your knowledge and understanding of corporate governance it would also test your knowledge and understanding of financial reporting it will go all the way and test your knowledge and understanding of financial management in terms of how a CFO can put all this together to drive the financial success of the business. Now the specific knowledge areas associated with each of these oversight disciplines is what I will call once again ethics and corporate social responsibility. You need to have a good understanding of international financial reporting standards, what is commonly called IFRAS, because the issues that you'll be dealing with they will require you to apply IFRAS. You also need to have a good understanding of international auditing standards, the role of external auditors what are the limitations in terms of how they do their work and apart from that issues of corporate finance how to raise money this business needs to look at how to raise capital to finance the to finance this fine this huge fine that is being imposed on them should they raise it from debt should they raise it from equity if they're going to raise it from debt or equity what are the implications on their share price what are the implications on their long-term capital structure from a taxation point of view even if they chose to raise it from from debt for instance they still have to make choices must they raise that debt from their home country in Sadimba or in the key foreign markets or in Europe. These are major issues that you are being called upon to look at and try and come up with recommendations. Now, that would be some form of rundown of the issues that you need to deal with on the case study, the knowledge areas and the specific skills and techniques that you need to draw from to be able to, to respond to that. We want to thank you so much for taking the time to listen to what we have to share with you. Good luck and see you at the Global Finals in Johannesburg, South Africa. Thank you.